I'm going to start off with uh, my disclosures. I've just recently finished a PhD in which my, re um, my research was funded by a charity. And there was a grant funding this, one of our senior authors um, from Boston Scientific, but they didn't have a hand in terms of the analysis itself. So throughout this weekend, we have determined that we are all believers of vocal therapy, at least in the medium term outcomes of um, patients' oncological control. But it's really important to, do, to understand the definitions in these papers. So on the outsides of this slide, I represent some data coming out of the UK looking at radical treatment options against vocal therapy. And in the middle, we've got our European um, colleagues who have looked at uh, definitions that also include the residual disease of three plus four or more in um, focal ablation, as well as counting focal treatment as only a one-shot option. And and with that particular definition, we do see a change in success rates compared to radical treatment. But when we're talking about the cost utility, it starts getting quite blurry. We, just because we've got residual disease doesn't necessarily mean that the patients are undergoing further treatment. And therefore, how does that impact our finances and um, the ability to fund these services in the future? So what we looked at is generally a very generalized a massive generalization of cost efficacy. So you ha have four different options. You can either have a, a new treatment, which is low cost, low, be low benefit, an easy rejection of a high cost, very little benefit, an easy implementation of a low cost and high benefit treatment option, or the more difficult where it's more costly, but there is a benefit to be seen according to standard of care. And within the NHS, we have a willingness to pay threshold for £30,000 per quality of life year um, associated with that treatment. And that gives you a gradient line there. So we looked at radical prostatectomy, external beam radiotherapy, and focal treatment, including either hyphae or cryotherapy. We looked at the time to event transition probabilities, um, which is essentially the time to retreatment or complications or progressive disease, and referenced that according to costs within the NHS. So we weren't just looking at upfront options. We were talking about neoadjuvant treatment, for example, ADT, following uh, prior to radiotherapy, the complications associated all the way through to local disease recurrence and distant disease and subsequent death. That allows us to create a mark of transition health state model, which essentially starts off with all patients in stable disease and may trans transfer in between any of the other groups within the time period of our study, which was 10 years. And to go through this table at the bottom, primarily, we're looking at the upfront cost being cheaper. Hit, where's my mouse? Ooh. The upfront cost being cheaper, which is the left column there. Moving on to the third column, we can see that according to um, supportive care, which is essentially watchful waiting, focal therapy provides greater quality of life years in comparison to EBRT and prostatectomy. Then moving on to the penultimate column, the net monetary benefit. So this is a really interesting analysis where we're looking at essentially the budget that you have per patient, the 300,000 over 10 years that we allocate to each patient with localized prostate cancer and how much of that money can we save by giving a particular treatment option and again, focal therapy was cheaper. Then moving on to the ICR, which is the third from the right column, that gives us our um, comparison of focal therapy against either EBRT or prostatectomy. And in both scenarios, we saw that focal therapy appeared to be um, cost efficient. And this was consistent through several versions of sensitivity analyses. And that gives us a lovely scatter plot where we find ourselves in the bottom right corner. Focal therapy, including the complications associated, the need for um, surveillance afterwards, and um, the potential for retreatment afterwards still keeps us in a low, lower cost and more beneficial the to radical prostatectomy and EBRT. This data has been presented and published within the Journal of Medical Economics, and I would encourage you to have a read of it, but please do come up and give me some questions. Uh, excellent talk. A quick question. Did you also look at how quickly those patients could get back to society and contribute you know, to the economy, 
in terms of you know, how long were they laid off from a prostatectomy versus a focal therapy treatment? Uh, specifically, no. Um, that's far beyond the scope of essentially a retrospective analysis. Um, so what we were looking at was published data of when they had um, noted complications such as rectal morbidity, particularly with radiotherapy, when they needed to go to the gastroenterologist for particular colitis, that kind of thing. That was the primary um, data source that we were coming through with that. It, this is an incredibly timely thing and it's incredibly important because uh, we in Australia at the moment are trying to get funding uh, from the government for focal therapy and um, th you know, th their criticism in the 200 page document that we have to put in is that we haven't done a cost analysis of this so uh, that, that's fantastic. My question is how did you cost the complications of whole gland therapy, particularly mm -hmm. impotence and incontinence? Because, I, I mean, it depends how you do that. We've done it previously. How, how, how did you actually fund it? I mean, yeah. in terms of penile prosthesis, injection therapy, psychological effects, all that stuff. Absolutely. So to split it to two separate components of the biological and then the psychological, so we looked at, number one, our own data set that came through um, Imperial College for the radical treatment options and looked at the complication rates of those and then costed that against NHS reference tariffs for treatments of. Then we also projected out to 10 years um, with other published data that was multinational to make sure that our complication rates were similar to what we were seeing elsewhere and again, costed that against reference costs in the NHS as if they were NHS patients. Now, the psychological component is um, a more complex one. So we were looking at the quality of life um, analysis and in particular EQ5Ds um, from, and with the assumption that a metastasis, for example, it, from a patient that had EBRT was considered the same in terms of the psycho psychological burden as with radiotherapy, as with focal therapy. So there is a, an element of a limitation there, to be fair. Um, but with that in mind, um, we again looked at the transition state model, you know, that triangular diagram that we were looking at, and the probability of being within each of those cohorts and and inferring the EQ5D on there, and that went into the, <laughs> it went into the um, calculation of qualies.